uh, this new friend that he has because he was so lonely. Um, but he has this sense again um, that um, he can't, um, so he doesn't. And that obviously keeps the plot going and allows John Boy to get towards um, the dramatic climax. Now, repetition is a very simple one. Some examples, you'll find your own. Um, he talks about his privacy. He's a bit like his father. He's very keen to be private. At the very beginning, when Marie is entering his drawers to move him out of the house in Berlin, um, the private things um, that belong to him were nobody else's business. And obviously, when he's surprised at several points, his arms are down by his side. He makes that um, his mouth the, the shape of an O. Okay, so that kind of rep repetition gives you an idea of the, also the narrative viewpoint. Um, it gives a kind of rhythm to the writing, um, and it kind of it shows uh, a build up. These threads, these things link together and kind of accumulate um, until obviously this surprises. Uh, and the shocks that he gets, the violations, the violence that he sees, um, become more and more extreme. Um, so it gives you a sense of drama building. Another example of repetition. Um, this is in a way is kind of like a metaphor for how we understand the character of Shmuel. Um, we remember it's just it's chapter ten by the time we actually uh, Bruno meets Shmuel. By the time the reader meets Shmuel, um, so slowly the truth personified in Shmuel about what's going on in the camp comes to the floor uh, and he's recognised and realised, so a dot to a speck to a blob to a figure to a boy. You, know, you can also read that as a metaphor for um, the Jewish people and how they were stripped of their identity in those prisoners' uniforms okay, and their heads were shaved. Um, stressing there is father's privacy. Um, obviously his father um, does show some consideration that he wants to keep his son in the dark about what he is doing, um, so he's not allowed in his office. Another technique, the structure. Okay, basically it's a series um, based on the whole problem, a series of climaxes and revelations um, and flashbacks um, based on the problem of what's going on in the camp and Bruno is trying to work that out, okay, and he never does in the end, okay, with the tragic ending. So, chapter one, um, Maria moves him out. Um, chapter one again, um, his mother refers to Hitler and um, Ava, his wife, um, visiting. And then the problem is established by chapters 3 and 4. Um, Gretel tries to explain it. Um, she thinks maybe it's the countryside. She tries to act all clever. Remember, she, because she's got high marks, she's doing her best. Um, it must be some sort of rehearsal, so she can't explain it either, even though she's three years older than Bruno. So she's no help. Then we have a flashback um, to the reason for leaving. Um, to explain it, well, you know, you jump into that drama and then you get the explanation later. Okay, so it keeps you reading, um, and that's Bruno's father thinking that obviously he can get, he can work his way up the hierarchy and get gain status. It's important work for the nation. He would call himself a patriot. Obviously, what he was was a monster. Um, the flashback to Christmas. Um, we have someone um, amongst them all who objects. Um, Bruno. Um, is he really the only the main character um, in the family, anyway, who, who is conscientious um, and who objects um, to what's going on? He, did, he Well, he kind of sees towards the end that they are equal, okay, him and Jamal, and that the Jewish people really doesn't seem to make sense that they're being separated from the rest of the people. Um, Bruno's grandmother objects, um, but she actually knows what's going on, so it's, it's no surprise. Um, so she can appreciate it. She walks out at Christmas. Remember, she dies, and um, Bruno's father doesn't get to make it up to her. So he suffers a little bit there, but you know, pales in comparison. Mini climax here um, when they meet. Another flashback to the Fury's visit. Um, we see we talk about him being xenophobic. Um, Gretel talks about learning French. She says, "Why would you want to?" So quite sharp, quite bitter. Um, even though he tries to make some jokes, they're, they're very good jokes. Um, he's he's characterised um, quite simply with his moustache um, and his kind of abruptness, like a, uh, a rude character. Um, obviously, he's um, the villain um, of history and the villain of the story. Um, a revelation here. Um, Shaul talks about his experience, the train journey, um, and the, the breaking up of his, his home and his family um, and his movement to Auschwitz. Okay, make sure you get the spelling of Auschwitz right there. Okay, um, moving on. Um, the revelation um, that um, Bruno's father has finally decided that it's too much and that the family should move back to Berlin. Um, 
perhaps brought on really by um, further details that Bruno knows a little bit more than his father would like him to know about what he calls the boys and the, uh, the people in the striped pyjamas. Um, so he decides to move them. Okay, but obviously it's too little too late. And the climax comes as they have their final adventure. That phrase, remember, reminiscent of a uh, phrase the Nazis used, the final solution, um, which was a euphemistic way of referring to, uh, a more pleasant way of referring to the gassing uh, and the mass slaughter of, of Jewish people. Um, so here um, the boys um, go on their adventure and they try to find Charles' father, um, but what they actually discover only through experience um, is. Um, what's happening to the Jewish people and, and, and they die at the end when they're gassed inside the chambers after being forced on that march. Then the aftermath. Bruno's father falls apart. He takes it out on the soldiers. He becomes very angry and bitter. Um, his mother stays around looking for Bruno but eventually goes back to Berlin and Gretel's in tears obviously. Um, nothing to do with a room or a dolls or a, or a precious um, posters of Germany she, she becomes so obsessed with more about uh, losing her um, brother. Even though they have their arguments, they have their differences, um, he was her brother. Okay, uh, last one, emotive language. Uh, we talked about this before, so language that draws a strong emotion. Um, now Maria um, is very reluctant to talk to Bruno about what's going on. She doesn't want him to blow the lid off uh, what's going on um, and expose or actually meddle with in any way um, the horrors that are on his doorstep. Okay. So that sort of frenzied worry that she feels that are, that's in her eyes um, really kind of communicates the sense of danger she feels. It's very emotive. Um, and this is uh, Bruno's grandmother. She's outraged. Okay, dressing up and doing the terrible, terrible things you do. Repetition for effect there. It makes me ashamed. Very strong verb choice. Okay, to be um, ashamed of her own son. Okay, parallels. Um, this is it's actually our last one. Um, drawing contrasts or comparisons. So the first one is the houses. Um, Berlin, five stories, very long banister, good to play on. Okay, and then the you know the lonely, barren kind of landscape of, of the new house, which is much smaller. Um, and his his view out the window is, is very different to the view out the window he would have had in um, Berlin. Um, this is Bruno's account. Okay, his father was a watchmaker. He had a modest kind of family. Um, lifestyle, but um, it was wholesome, it was good. He was enjoying his life before it was torn apart. Okay, and um, that wall that he's talking about there, um, there's a parallel here. He's looking out the window, instead of seeing a fence divide things, um, as Bruno does, um, he sees the wall. Okay, the wall that was built to divide the ghetto, to separate the Jewish people in their ghetto, their slums, um, from the rest of the population of Berlin. And that obviously is symbolic of the segregation of the um, inequality um, in Berlin the Nazis imposed. Um, chapter 15, um, Bruno's hand appears healthy and full of life. A very visual comparison here, very visual parallel. Um, Bruno's hand is healthy, Charles is um, very, very sick and unhealthy. Okay, That comparison there of um, dying twigs. Okay, so a sense of just how bad it is. Here's a final one. Okay, imagery. So again, visual. Um, just in front of the um, gardens, uh, everything changed. That was where the huge wire fence begins. So we get a sense of perspective there, in a literal sense, like 20 feet and then 30 feet and behind the trees, and then you, you see the camp. Okay. Um, now, you're obviously going to talk about the characters. Um, so just a few key pointers here. Uh, Shmuel, obviously, we're linking um, with. Bruno, um, we could link him with a lot of uh, characters, but he's the most extreme example of someone who was victimised, someone who suffered and picked on. Um, Bruno shares this kind of similarity with um, Shmuel in that he's, he's lonely and they find friendship. So that's their, their moral, that they are equal, they are good friends. Um, to contrast, the more kind of uh, villainous characters, Bruno's father, obviously, um, and Kotler, just 19, but obviously he's been brainwashed. Um, and well, either he's a psychopath or um, he's not really uh, thinking too much about um, other people. Okay, he's lost his grip on, on reality. And, um, those kind of words, cruel, vicious, yet ambitious. Okay, he wants to go far, that's a motive for him. He lost sight of uh, his humanity, you would say. 
Um, more victims. Pavel, the butler, okay, uh, the Jew, um, who suffers um, for beaten up by Kotler, um, enslaved effectively, forced to work. Um, Bruno's mother, um, she gradually becomes more and more aware and conscious of the effects on the children, which is her primary concern, okay. She's not a bad woman, she does, you know, get on very well with Kotler, um, who we think of as extremely evil. Um, but she's um, either ignorant or um, very clouded in her judgment. She eventually um, does the right thing and tries to get the kids out of there. Okay, so she's fragile, she's, she's worried, but she's uh, kind of a kind woman, certainly towards her children. Um, Maria, um, the servant, okay, the maid. Um, Bruno's father thinks she's overpaid, she's a waste of time. But he did help her out, remember. He did um, pay for her. Uh, family and um, helped her out and they, they gave her a job and uh, a need and gave her support when she needed it. Um, and Gretel Bruno's sister, okay, um, still you know quite naive, um, but trying to act all mature. Okay, um, the other kind of question that you asked about, and most likely kind of questions are the thematic questions. So let's have a look at them now. Um, first one, friendship. So you're thinking primarily about Bruno and Schmuel, obviously. Um, next one, um, something like quality. So you're looking at the treatment of Jewish characters like Shmuel um, or Pavel, um, and the behaviour of Nazis like Kotler and Bruno's father. Okay, and obviously Shmuel's relationship with Bruno will come up there again. That's the centerpiece. That's the whole the focus um, about which the plot pivots. Um, in that you know they are equal. In the end, they even look the same. Um, and there's absolutely no discernible, no obvious. No defensible reason why they shouldn't, you know, just hold hands and you know be friends. Um, next one, um, victims and villains. Okay, so the villains primarily talking about Bruno's father um, and Kotler, but they also suffer. Remember, Kotler is sent to the front line. He's demoted because of his father uh, deserting them, deserting the country um, when he's needed, as Bruno's father says. Um, Bruno's father obviously suffers by losing his um, child. And you know his, his his family falls apart. His wife, um, they're always in arguments about the situation that they're in, and he feels, uh, to some extent, pressured um, to perform and um, do his job, do what um, Hitler and those above him are asking of him. Um, but those are the main villains. Everyone else um, suffers, um, obviously, in some way. Don't just say please, um, but you know Bruno and Schmuel suffer because they die at the end. It's all about the build up to that. Okay. What happened to Schmuel's family, his treatment inside the camp, getting beaten up by Kotler, um, losing his father, losing his grandparents, okay? Um, the forced work he, you know, he has to do, um, you know, think about his frail hand. And then and Bruno, lonely, um, separated from his friends again, um, and the luxuries, the lifestyle that he once had and came to expect. Um, and he kind of kept in the dark, okay? Um, his innocence in the end. Um, was ruined, uh, was destroyed uh, with the finality of death. Um, but he does suffer in the run up to that. Okay, um, it's not a happy home, it's not a happy family that he is brought up in. Okay, the scenery, the situation that surrounds him, is is one of chaos uh, and isn't you know, conducive to bringing up a child and an enjoyable childhood. Okay, uh, last one on that same note is innocence. So you're thinking about the children involved here, so Gretel, um, Bruno and Schmuel. Um, people talk about once you gain adulthood, you lose your kind of innocence a little. This is obviously a brutal and shocking account of how they lost um, their innocence. Okay, So what changes, um, what experiences did they go through um, that really um, ruined their childhood? Okay, so. Hopefully that's helped you, just a few key pointers. The next um, tutorial goes into more detail with more quotes on character and themes um, that you can note down. Okay, thank you.